Thanks. It's great to be here. I'm Steve Benson, the founder and CEO of Badger Maps, which is the number one route planner and mapping system for salespeople who are out in the field. So salespeople that meet with their customers face to face. I founded Badger Maps back in 2012 because my career had always been in outside sales. So I knew the problems field sales people face firsthand. I'm going to start over about the. <laughs> Start over because you don't have someone presenting to you to say the title at the top too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so I should I should actually opener. Just say the title at the top and then start in with your intro. Okay, so I should just start by saying, "Hi, I'm Steve, and I'm here to tell you about coaching your sales and then team." Go into your intro. Okay. Okay, so we can start again here. All right. So I'll just say today we're going to be talking. Like, right, I'll start by saying today we're talking about. Or should I thank thank them for being here? How about I thank them for being here and then say that? Because that, that gives them some more flexibility on there. Thanks, it's great to be here. I'm Steve Benson, and today we're talking about coaching your sales teams to become top prospectors. So uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Badger Maps, which is the number one route planner and mapping system for salespeople who are out in the field. So salespeople that meet with their customers face to face. I founded Badger Maps back in 2012 because my career had always been in outside sales. And so I knew the problems field salespeople face firsthand. And so I took learnings about those problems and combined them with my mapping and mobile background from when I was at Google and built Badger focused on solving the problems that field salespeople experience. So let's jump into it. One of my favorite topics really, uh, sales coaching strategies to increase your team's revenue here. So every sales manager wants their team to close bigger deals. Think about this, how much would revenue go up if your entire team was closing deals like your very best sales rep? Imagine the rep who generates the most leads on your team. What if every single rep was prospecting as well as that rep? How much more revenue would your sales team bring in? Today, we're gonna to learn how to make that happen. Your team's success starts with the manager. So let's talk about how to manage a sales team so that every rep performs at their absolute best. A great sales team starts with a manager who's also a great coach. How is a good soccer coach different from a bad soccer coach? You know the concept of means and ends, right? Well. A bad soccer coach just tells you the desired end, but does not help you with the means on how to accomplish that. For example, they might tell their team to play better defense or the, they might be mad that the team's not scoring enough. A good coach, on the other hand, they'll identify the specific skills that team members could improve to enhance their performance. They provide their players with insights into how they could be better. And then they create drills to help the team achieve their goals. For example, they may say to a left forward, hey, your right crossover could be done like this to get an extra jump on the, on the defender. Go practice that like this, or you know, whatever the skill is. And that's the same strategy that great sales managers can apply to their sales team. So how do you do that? As a manager, you've got a deeper level of insight into your whole sales team's performance than anyone else. And you also know the strengths and weaknesses of the individual members of the team. It's your job to improve their weaknesses, but before you can improve their weaknesses, you need to recognize what the rep's strengths are. So the first step to ask yourself is, which skills determine whether my team succeeds or fails? Break your sales process down into those skills. You'll end up with a few key skills for each stage of your sales cycle. Once, you have, once you've identified the key attributes and skills that make your reps succeed or fail, rate each and every rep on your team on how good they, they are at those skills on a scale of one to 10. 
so measuring some of this stuff is going to feel a little bit subjective, right? But the goal is to identify who is really good at a given skill so that they can be the model for the others. If no one on the team is good at a certain skill, you can always tap your network or an expert or a consultant to fill in for that certain area. You want to use your judgment and historical sales data to rank all your reps from one to 10 in each category. For example, you might use historical sales data from your CRM. Um, you know, the data in there is very powerful and, and, and can identify who has the best skills in a certain area in the team if you're able to sift through the data appropriately. Like for a skill like email follow-ups or something, if the emails are in the CRM, you can, you can you'll be able to see that. You can also look at sales metrics, like the number of meetings, number of phone calls, number of closed deals over a given time. And that can be one data point that you use to identify uh, who's got strengths and weaknesses in, in each of these areas for each member of your team. So, you know, greater up as, if the, as a 10 if they perform a certain skill as good as they could. You wouldn't make any changes. And grade them a one if they're absolutely terrible at a skill. And everyone else kind of falls somewhere in between. So a five on the skill of timely and relevant follow-up might mean, that might mean the rep, the rep did follow up, but they didn't do it very well or it wasn't timely, et cetera. So it can be informative to discuss these skills in your one-on-one -on -one conversations with members of your team and, and get their feedback uh, on, on what they think they're good at and what they perceive other people on the team to be particularly good at and you know find out how they feel about their performance what what part of the sales process do they like the most what part do they like the least and and have them score themselves and uh, you can have them do that for each skill in your whole ranking system you want to collect their feedback and put the self-evaluated score next to the ranking that you assigned self-evaluation can be a, a super powerful tool and in my experience, you might notice that the reps who are the most honest and aware about their performance are the most coachable and might improve the fastest. In those same one-on-one -on -one conversations with your reps, you can also ask them to talk about who amongst their peers they feel is great at each one of their skills or even rate some of their peers if that helps to elicit the conversation. So, you know, for example, who, who do they turn to for help when there are questions about the product? Who do they think is the best negotiator? Uh, smart reps tend to notice when their peers are particularly good at something so that they can mimic it or learn from it. Leverage their, their eyes on each other because you only have one set of eyes as a sales manager, but a great leader will leverage the knowledge of their entire team. So be sure to ask their opinions. You don't need to show your ranking list to the team. The point is to give you a clear view of who's good at what so that you can have the most talented people on your team share their skills and knowledge with the rest of the team. You can compare your opinions with what the reps thought about themselves and, and what the reps thought about their peers. And, and you, the goal is to kind of focus in on this list of, of all the reps ordering of their abilities Focus in on who the top performer is in each skill set. Now, this person is going to be your go-to resource for improving your sales training and getting the rest of your team, the, the rest of the team up to speed on this skill. So, how do we put this into action here? So, first, divide your coaching plan by skill set uh, in order to maximize the ROI of each rep's training. So most reps don't need new hire type sales training all over again. It, they just have to build their skills in one or two opportunity areas where they have underdeveloped skills that are holding them back from being their best. Now, you know who on the team needs help and you know who on the team is the best person to help them. And now that you've identified the skills that reps need to be successful on your team and figured out who is good at what, it's time to turn your best reps into coaches. First, meet with your top ranking reps and discuss their strengths and weaknesses. No matter how great they are, they aren't perfect, nobody is. So 
you coach your best reps first so that they know how to train the rest of the team. Spend a few days shadowing your top reps, looking for opportunities to improve their weaknesses and getting an understanding of how they utilize their strengths. Analyze their daily schedule. How do they use their time in order to operate at such a high level in their, in their job? As a manager, your job here is to help your sales reps understand the subtle things they're doing that make them stand out amongst their peers. They may not even notice that what they're doing is special in a given area. For example, they might assume that everyone closes a deal, quote unquote, this way, but you know that everyone doesn't do that, but that and that's why this person has a higher close rate. So you then you can help them understand why they're good at something and that will help prepare them to communicate what they're doing with the rest of the team. Even the best reps generally aren't naturally great coaches. This is pretty common actually. The greatest practitioners are often not the greatest coaches. Even Einstein struggled as a college professor in elementary aspects of physics, uh, probably because it was, it was hard for him because he was so far removed from you know, the basic courses. But his lectures, supposedly were pretty dry and he was literally Einstein. So <laughs> the bottom line, the, the lesson here is that the skill that you've identified that a certain rep is so good at, it doesn't mean that the rep can just off the top of their head teach others how to be great at it. They're gonna need to put thought and elbow grease into how they're gonna transfer that knowledge effectively. Also, don't just look at what they're doing differently, but look at how they're performing the activities that they're especially good at. For example, watch how your top reps plan their day, decide what to do first, organize their information, or prepare for sales calls. Find the details that are really creating your champions. You wanna, you wanna look for the obvious ones, like getting to work early, but also less obvious, less obvious traits, like the, the body language they use with prospects or how they overcome certain types of common objections to buying your product. Okay, so now that you understand how important it is to turn your best reps into coaches for the rest of the team, let's take a closer look at the critical skills that you should be looking to identify in your reps that they're particularly good at and therefore able to transfer the knowledge to the rest of the team. A few examples of the types of skill sets, skills that uh, determine how successful your reps might be are prospecting and building rapport, managing new prospects and your territory, and qualifying. So now we'll go through these skills one at a time and think about how to identify them. First, Prospecting and building rapport. For this skill, you wanna watch for things like how your top rep starts a call, uh, builds rapport or becomes friendly with the prospect, uh, personalizes your offering, uh, how, they, how they ask prospects to take the next step. Finding the right opportunities is the first key to beating your quota. And doing this well depends on a lot of different factors, including the number of leads that the rep is contacting. But proper technique will help everything else there fall into place. Uh, so look at things like, look at their technique on tonality. Um, this can play a big role in how your sales reps are perceived by your, your prospects. Pay attention to how your rep approaches prospecting and how they build rapport and, uh, and help them prepare a plan around what messages they communicate during their early interactions with prospects. For example, prospecting is often not a rep's favorite activity, but if your reps sound bored or annoyed while they're prospecting, they're probably setting themselves up for failure. Uh, there's a reason that when when cold calling over the phone, some people like to have a mirror on their desk that they smile into because people can hear your smile. They can hear those, those subtleties like that. Frankly, I, I think the, the biggest things that I would guess separate your best reps from your low performance performers on lead generation are one, whether they consistently spend the time to do it and two, whether they're effectively using technology to automate the busy work parts of prospecting. 
Um, look for what the folks in your team are, who are good at prospecting are doing in these areas first. And that way you can replicate those skills and abilities across the team. So next thing is managing new prospects and your territory. So you wanna make sure that you're breaking up territories fairly and in a way that makes sense. Uh, studies show that proper sales territory management improves sales performance since it ensures effective allocation of both resources and people's time. But a lot of sales managers and sales reps overlook the importance of proper sales territory management, both at the managerial level and at the rep level. So I'm sure best reps are, the, are your best reps because, because you gave them the best territory. And when that happens, it's a problem for everyone because it's super demotivating for, for everyone else in the team if one guy is just you know, performing really, really well, but it's not because they're working harder or because they're better than the other reps at, at, the, at, the, at the craft of sales, but they just happen to be you know, dealt the, the best territory. Reps need to know where customers are in their territory in relation to one another to act effect effectively. They, so it, for example, you know, in, in my world here, building efficient routes when they're in the field and therefore spending more time with their most important customers, um, there's a ton of research that shows that you can save the reps a lot of time and make them a lot more productive. Uh, knowing the information and characteristics of the different customers and being able to visualize that in the territory can help the reps focus on the very best deals. This data often lives in the CRM, but not all companies know that they can leverage this information by connecting their CRM to a map and displaying it in a way that is usable for their reps when they're out in the field. You'll have some, some reps that are great at planning their time in the field and some that are not so great at it. You can measure this by collecting data on things like the number of meetings per day, and you can compare this metric across your reps. Good planning allows reps to more tightly schedule their day with more meetings, be on time for more meetings, and end up not zigzagging all around town. So you also wanna get insight into what's going on in the field by by first collecting data from the field, which is surprisingly many companies don't collect a ton of data from the field as to what's actually happening out there. So you, you wanna measure the activity in the field and that way field activities will get more focus from your reps. Like every other skill, some reps are just naturally better at this because they figured out from experience how important it is or because someone taught them how to do it. But um, the, the whole, the whole territory management thing is really important. A lot of times you'll, you'll actually find that your, your best reps are using a territory management tool. Um, you know, like, like the one that my company built badge maps um, is, is a good example of that. But uh, you want to, you want to have the people that are really good at this and, and maybe are using tools to, to be more efficient, teach the other reps how they're getting organized in the field and how to really manage their territory efficiently. I'm obviously super passionate about this um, since I built a company around it and everything, but um, I, so I, I, can, I can talk about this all day, but suffice it to say that uh, in my experience, it's an area that you can, territory management is an area that you can put in the least amount of work and get the most amount of results across a whole sales team. Um, skills like territory management don't really get enough focus while skills like closing tend to be a little overdone probably. Um, so low hanging fruit there. Next, we have qualifying. Qualifying prospects is probably the most underrated part of a sales prospect, the whole, the whole, the whole sales process because it saves you a ton of, ton of time. Great qualification ensures that your reps aren't wasting their time with people who don't have the ability to make purchasing decisions. So zoom in on how your best rep decides which leads to approach, scores the leads they find, have a qualification conversation, and, and how, how they prioritize their prospects and opportunities. Qualifying the right opportunities well makes every step, every step in the sales process that comes afterwards that much easier. A lot of sales reps aren't super thoughtful um, well, they aren't thoughtful enough about the qualification aspect of sales. You know, maybe it's because they're optimistic. Maybe it's because it's a high-pressure job. They're, they want to grab every lead. But 
you know, instead they, they can chase after deals that had signals that it was unlikely to close early on, or maybe signals that it was just wasn't, it was unlikely to close soon. Um, but reps can get happy years around this. And, and that is arguably one of the biggest time wasters on sales teams. So help your reps who are best at qualifying, figure out what makes their approach successful and what they're doing to effectively qualify their opportunities and help them prior to prioritize the best ones. So let's, let's try to bring this all back together. We've just identified the skills a sales rep needs to be successful. Um, we figured out who on a, on a team has the deepest expertise in each one of those skills. So now it's time to execute this plan and enable your best reps in each skill to teach the rest of the sales team how, how to also be a master of those key skills. So in this next step, you need to prepare your top reps to clone themselves and coach their peers. Group training sessions are often an easy way to get everyone on the same page. The top performing reps can show the rest of the team how to utilize the techniques in situational exercises. The rep teaching, uh, can demo, they can demo their skill live, or if your sales team is remote, you can obviously do this sort of thing remotely. In general, I've found that in-person training is more engaging and that people learn better in person when they do exercises that really engage them. The reps that are learning will probably pay close attention to the lesson because they're likely to know that it's their peer who's teaching them and giving them tips and tricks uh, that are truly the things that you need to be successful in the specific role. You know, uh, Successful reps on a team have so much credibility here. Also, it's worth noting here that having the opportunity to teach the rest of the team a skill or ability that they're great at is a fantastic way for your reps to develop their leadership skills. You can host these training sessions as a part of a weekly meeting or at your monthly or quarterly or annual meetings. I like to have skills taught regularly and make learning a regular part of the cadence of the job. And that's because you're likely to get better results in terms of knowledge retention and skill development. If you teach new skills for an hour a week, then you'll just get, you'll get more mental retention than if you cram 10 hours a day straight for a week at the annual kickoff. Uh, so it's better to spread it out. This process can also uncover who on the team needs extra help and can, you know, you kind of, allows you to get in front of things before they go off track. So pay, pay close attention to the reps who maybe haven't improved after the group training sessions and have your expert reps circle back and, and mentor these reps personally. They can, uh, they can kind of meet with them one-on-one -on -one and, and discover their problem areas and help them develop. Make sure to document the breakthroughs that help people improve for anyone who has similar issues in the future because this whole process can create valuable training materials that you can continue to update along the way um, and use with new reps and, and you know new hires in the team etc this process takes time obviously but the rewards of improving your team will certainly show up in your sales results so it's it's really worth it if your coaching strategy works here your entire team will start closing more deals. And by turning your best reps into coaches, you've really set a new standard for the rest of the team. I, I think this also helps you as the manager to create a healthy sales culture focused on self-improvement and performance. I've always felt like there's two styles of sales leadership in the world, spreadsheet managers and coaches. Spreadsheet managers aren't necessarily connected to their team's activities, but they're really laser focused in on the results. Coaches, on the other hand, they're right on the sideline. They're ready to jump in and, and help their team out when the time is right. Most sales reps are a mixture of both styles, which is probably where you want to be. But a lot of great managers, they can slip into like a pure spreadsheet style of leadership. And 
and this is probably because there's so much to do and or so much going on in the modern world and it can just really be exhausting to stay on top of everything going on and stay connected to the team and to the performance but um you want to make sure you don't allow yourself to lose sight of what matters and that's you know the actual folks in your team that you're leading um smart coaching you know it really puts the team in a position to succeed when you're giving when you're giving your reps the skills and abilities to win bigger and better deals by developing the skills that their peers are are using to close deals on your team um you know great results can occur and and just like a great coach will name team captains in sports you can deputize the reps in your team who are the strongest in a particular area to lead, to coach, and to develop the rest of your team. Not only will this spread the skills of your top performers to the rest of your team, but it helps gen develop the next generation of leaders for your team as well. I hope this webinar has been really helpful for you, and I hope you've learned some tips that you can implement to improve your sales team's efficiency and performance. If you'd like to hear more thoughts like these, I also have a podcast about the skills that field salespeople need. It's called Outside Sales Talk. You can find it on all the podcasting platforms. Um, like I said, that, that was called Outside Sales Talk. Um, I have a bunch of free sales training videos on our YouTube channel that I've made over the years. Uh, they're just available. Uh, to find those, you just go to the Badger Maps YouTube channel and there's a whole area of sales training videos. Um, Fantastic, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us.